What's up, y'all? This is Nina Perez, and this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. I'm so glad you're here. You guys know that I go on this planet looking for the best people on it to come on here to grow, challenge, and transform your thinking. So I found someone for you. His name is Joe Joe Templin, and he's a reformed um, physicist, right? Physicist. And that word always catches everybody, Joe. He's a financial planner. He's a startup founder and autodynamic didactic there we go a polymath best described as a swiss army knife now he has invested the past two and a half plus decades of helping others reach their financial potential as a planner a trainer a mentor creator and he's also the author of everyday excellence and you guys know that we have so many amazing people that come on here to talk to us about how we can transform our thinking and become better even if it's one percent a day how are you joe thank you for coming I am doing absolutely awesome, Nina. I'm looking forward to having a great conversation here. Yeah, me too. You know, I forgot to ask you before we started if the Yankees won or not. The Yankees did win last night. Uh, okay, okay. So it was a good night. 2 0 win, but it was still a win. That's right. Uh, at least that's good because then you didn't come out here like, so this is a good thing. Joe. You know what? Baseball is the perfect game for practicing stoicism because it doesn't matter if you win or lose. The season's 162 games long. There's going to be another game tomorrow. You got to get right. up and fight. So unless there's something historic like Aaron Judge tying or breaking the record, then it's just another day at the office. Right. right. That's true. So, Joe, I have a really great audience and they're um, super involved. They're always asking questions. They're a great community. A lot of them are business owners, uh, people who are looking into getting into business, entrepreneurs and so on. So, Joe, tell us a little bit about you and then we'll take it from there. So as you said, I'm a reformed physicist. I am an unrepentant geek and I'm also ADHD. I wasn't diagnosed until I was an adult, which is probably a good thing. And I had a very supportive mom. My mom, the nun, yes, my mom was a nun, uh, was also an educator. And so she encouraged us to pursue our passions, which was like literally everywhere. So I say I'm an autodidactic polymath because I did applied physics, did economics, did tax law, um, behavioral psychology, martial arts. Oh, so you awesome. can draw from all these different arenas. Yeah. And one of the things when you go into business for yourself is you don't get to be the SME, the subject matter expert exclusively. If right. you're working with somebody else, yeah, they'll arrange you know, to do sales. They'll get you in front of the clients. They'll do all that. If you're running your own business, all of a sudden you're chief cook and bottle washer. You are right. doing the marketing, you are doing the accounting, you're doing the invoicing like I just did, and you're, mm -hmm. you have to chase down clients that don't want to pay or whatever. You're doing contract negotiation. You have to either do your own website or outsource it. You have to deal with the marketing and branding, all these different components. And so having a touch of ADHD is a very good thing yeah. in a startup community. Yeah. But then again, as you build, if you build it into a large organization, that is actually then a detriment. So you need to be able to switch gears or be able to bring in the resources yeah. to make things happen. That's really, really smart. And do you think that had a little bit to do with your personality of wanting to be a, or being becoming a polymath? Is having that ADHD component? I think it was. And um, also, when I was 10 years old, a kid, I was severely, severely asthmatic. So... I couldn't do all the athletic stuff that my friends did. So my world was books, studying. I think I was eight years old when I told my mom I wanted to learn everything there was to learn. So she pointed to the encyclopedia and said, get to work. Oh, that's so I cool. did. I read the entire encyclopedia when I was eight years old. Oh, wow. um, so, But at 10 years old, I had an asthma attack and I actually died. Oh, my gosh. You know, laying there on the table, the bright oh, light thrown down by the whole nine yards. Really? Obviously, I got better. Um, yeah. <laughs> I hope so, or this is going to get a well, very interesting. This is, better, but this is who I am, so just deal with it. But <laughs> since that point, as my friends joke, I burn the candle at both ends and in the middle with a flamethrower. Mm. You know, we all get 86,400 seconds per day. I don't care if you're Bill Gates, mm. Elon Musk, kid graduating from college, we all have the exact same allotment at the end of the day. It's run out. You don't get to wow. like bank them for the wow. future. So it's how are you utilizing them? How are you maximizing your time? Are you wasting your time? Are you spending your time or are you investing your time? And so I try and invest and I try to wherever possible, if it makes sense, 
double dip. So I'm driving into the office, I'm listening to a podcast, getting two things done. I'm going out for a run, I'm listening to an audiobook. I'm prepping dinner with the kids, I'm supervising homework, and I'm also simultaneously either playing music or a podcast that they'd be interested in or, or what have you. So in those situations, I can get two or three uses of the time. Mm -hmm. Other times like this, you know, it should be exclusive, no distractions. That's why my phone's on airplane mode. Mm -hmm. So I am 100% committed to you. And having that capability to go multitask, but then laser-like focus and switch back and forth is one of the things that's going to allow people who are entrepreneurs to actually accomplish everything that needs to get done. Yeah, because that's not an easy thing, right? I mean, it, it's it's um, trying to trying to laser focus and, and shut your mind off of all the other things that you're thinking about, right? So you're thinking about the next thing to do or the, the next thing that you're missing out on while you're doing this. And I think that it's also very important to be at that moment, right, Joe? So yeah. me and you, are, as you said, are not promised like, all, we're not promised tomorrow, basically, right? We're not, right? So this well, conversation- Well, today would have right, been my best friend's 50th birthday and he died seven years ago. So, right. Wow. You know, yeah. This is one of the things that I've got an opportunity that he doesn't. I'm going to take advantage of it. I'm not right. going to screw it up because you know there's right. no reset button on the game of life. Right. And but how do you think that that um, uh, works for you as far as? the other parts of it where you want to maybe have a quiet moment. Do you have those? Do you have moments where you like want to unplug and like disconnect from it all? How, how do you manage that as somebody who is really driven? So what I do to unplug, most people would call completely insane, but that's okay. So I'm a, I'm a martial artist. So that's when I'll, oh, be, that's good. I'll, I'll go and do my forums every single morning. And when I'm doing my forums, I'll only be listening to like, um, beach music or mm -hmm. uh, something like that so I can get into a state of theta wave generation because that's when your subconscious and your conscious almost blend. It's perfect act of meditation as a martial artist, but also it allows my entire mind to be solving the problems I need to solve without me even paying attention to it. Right. So afterwards, right. I immediately roll into writing and uh, problem solving stuff because I'm at my maximum power from that. Um, I, I'm an ultra marathoner, so I'll go out and run 15 miles without blinking right. an eye. And to me, that is relaxation while other people call it, you know, torture and pain and, you know, suffering. <laughs> You know what? You're very, um, it, it's very inspiring actually listening to you. I, I think that a lot of us really, when we listen to other people who do so many things, it makes you realize that, you know, there's maybe a little bit more we can also push ourselves for a little bit, you know, um, because I, I uh, there's always this, um, I guess it's like a mental thing, right? Where the excuses come up where you can't, or you, you get that, uh, I call it lazy thinking, you know, where well, you just don't want to do it. It comes down to laziness in a yeah. lot of ways because yeah. I mean, we follow rules of thumb and heuristics because it saves time and energy for the most mm -hmm, part, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's going to let us survive and enjoy the moment, but it's not going to let us make progress overall. Mm -hmm. And in any situation, we really have two potential outcomes, two choices that we can go down, two roads. We can do the thing that's easy in the moment. It feels good in the moment. You know, eating the donut instead of eating the apple, um, mm -hmm. taking the drag on the cigarette instead of not, opening up the dating app and, you know, swiping, um, you know, playing video games instead of studying for the test, a avoiding the conversation with the, the important person and just, you know, letting things deteriorate over time. So it feels good in the moment, but in a lot of ways, it's pain avoidance or pleasure seeking. And what that does is it's temporary, it's short term, mm -hmm. and the outcome is things are worse. You keep eating donuts and cheeseburgers, you're going to get diabetes and your pants right. are going to fit and your knees are going to hurt and all that. You smoke cigarettes, you're going to eventually get cancer. You right. play video games instead of studying, you're going to fail out of school. Okay. Right. So you've got this feels good, easy path now but it leads to a much more difficult life. Or you can do the hard thing now. You can get up off the couch and go for a run. Right. And you're right. going to be sweaty and gross and all that, but you're going to feel better afterwards. And you're going to have a lower resting heart rate. Your metabolism is going to be better. You sweat all, all the toxins in your system. So your, your entire life improves from doing mm -hmm. that. You know, you can actually crack the book and study and pass the class, get a better job, have a better life. You know, you can take the time to build your business 
because mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. you're an entrepreneur, there's nobody cracking the whip over you and saying, hey, you need That's to be true. here at 7 a.m. working. Right, but right. If you're cracking right. the whip on yourself, you're working towards something that's really significant and motivating to you. You're going to put in the work. You're going to do the things that others are like, why the hell are you doing that? You're crazy, you know? And people who don't have the entrepreneurial mindset look at those of us who are business builders like we're insane. And those right. of us who are business builders looking at people going into corporate America like, dude, do you understand how much risk you're taking? You're going right. to be 33 years old, they're going to downsize you and you're going to be you know, right. there with your minivan hating your life. Right. <laughs> Tell your so, trip. <laughs> it's doing true. the hard things now leads yeah. to a much better situation overall. Yeah. But was that always your mindset, Joe? Like, was that always something that you had in you that you did the hard things that, or was there a moment or time in your life, maybe through college or before or whatever, that you didn't have that kind of drive? Or well, do you think in that's college, in you? I certainly enjoyed myself. Let's not get yeah. this wrong. All right. Yeah. But um, even in college, I was looking at college like the greatest smorgasbord in the world. This is a chance to experience and figure out mm. who you are. That's really your goal in your 20s is to understand who you are so right. that you can then pursue that with your future. And so, you know, I was on student senate, I was in the fraternity. I obviously chased, uh, you know, members of the opposite sex. You know, I drank okay. more than my share of beer. I did Taekwondo. I played on our volleyball team. I, I did all these things because I was trying to truly experience and understand. Did That's my awesome. academics really suffer a little bit? Yeah, okay. I didn't have a 4-0, big deal. Okay, because as one of my friends said, a, an A in geology is not going to pay my mortgage. Right. It's not right. A, an A in a class is not going to make me into a better human being overall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's going to be part of it. So you know, you do enough to extract what you can from them. But I've got teenage sons, and the way that I look at life and I talk to them about is that life is one giant game okay and so one you should have fun with it two you should gamify things and you know try and get the feedback wherever possible on stuff mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if the goal is to eventually you know get to the castle beat the boss and you know win the princess's heart and all the gold it's not a straight path getting there right you know sometimes you have to go off on side quests and you mm -hmm. go into the tavern and you talk to the weird old man that's Right. <laughs> or you know you go and you have to like go do this task to get some gold so that you can you know build the armor okay that maybe you have to take a second job or maybe you have to take a mm -hmm. job you don't like for you know a year or two to build mm -hmm. up some bank you know you are acquiring skills so maybe you know doing this one thing where you're doing bookkeeping is going to help you on your main quest of building your business down the road so if you do all these things instead of just you know plodding along trying to follow the straight path because it never works right you expose yourself to whatever you can whether it's people resources new ideas new concepts you never know where you're going to draw from that's going to be able to help you out and the classic example on this is steve jobs dropping out of college right and taking a calligraphy class there right. which led to all the cool fonts that we had on the Mac and then eventually in Windows. So you don't know where the side quest is going to take you and what it's going to yield very often. Right. But when you add it all up, that's how you put yourself in the right position of being able to achieve things. And that's one of the reasons why I call myself the Kingdom Swiss Army Knight is because I have all of these different tools that I've acquired over the decades. Right, right. And that's the key, right? Over the decades, it's not something you did overnight, but it's something that you pursued and started to do, you know, as you as you kept growing and maturing and, and going. And I think that's one of the problems a lot of entrepreneurs and, you know, people who are starting into business hit a wall because they think they, they can't do it. Well, Joe's doing it. Why can't I? But Joe also has, you know, two and a half plus decades of developing this, right, Joe? And I mean, that's- the more important thing was the mindset mm -hmm. was that I'm going right. to learn. Okay. And so right. if you're going to have the mindset that even though this sucks, what I'm doing right now, if I can learn something from it, it's right. going to make me better. I'm putting it in the mental bank for the future. Mm -hmm. overall. Mm -hmm. And so acquiring all those different pieces, having a vision ultimately, hopefully, and working towards it is the combination. So you need to have this balance of the big vision, but being able to do the daily grind, especially for your entrepreneurial clients. I mean, if you got to get up mm -hmm. and write, two pages in your book every single day that can beat you down if you're like oh geez i gotta write 700 pages for this book or whatever like i did or you know i need to write 2,000 lines of code today that can be overwhelming but when you break it right. down 
you can grind through it, but also you need to understand what that's doing in perspective to the big thing. Right, right. And I don't know why we do that to ourselves as entrepreneurs and people who are getting into business anyway, because nothing in your life you learned like that. Nothing you learned like this, right? Well, so I it's also because we've gotten to the point where I mean you can GTS anything, uh Google right. that stuff. So it's instead true. of having to go find the encyclopedia and look through it and then go to the card catalog and cross-reference all that, you type it in and in 30 seconds you have more knowledge than I could have accumulated in a deck. Right, right, right. right. And so it's so easy that's no longer appreciated. Mm, that's good. Okay? And everything that's from good. like when we were kids, you know, you had to send yep. the film off. So it'd take weeks yep. and then you had the Polaroids. Now it's like, okay, you take 500 photos to get the one that you post on Instagram. And so everybody's putting these beautiful things up there and you're not seeing all the craziness and gunk that leads right. to it and all the bad ones. And so everyone's comparing somebody else's absolute best with where they are at this moment. And mm -hmm. not realizing that's going to be a process and being willing to buy into the process. So buying into the process is one of the most important things that I could tell young entrepreneurs. Learn to love the grind of building your business. Learn right. to love building the business. Don't focus on trying to IPO. Don't try and focus on being bought out by you know, one of the big tech chimeras. Focus on building something that solves problems that you love working on. And if you do that, you're actually going to build something much better. And if you eventually do get bought out, guess what? You're going to go build another company immediately yeah. afterwards because you'll find another problem to work on. <laughs> right. Because most people who sell big companies like that, it's because of exactly what you said. They fell in love with the process. They started doing the process. They did the work. And so now when they sell it, they're like, oh, shoot, I ain't got yeah, to do something They go else. to the beach for like three days right. and they come back with <laughs> a new idea and they're going to work again. Right. I mean, that did you um, strike me as that type of person. Like, you know what? Okay, I'm done. I'm yeah, done so with the, the day after I finished the book. <laughs> so, what with uh, Everyday Excellence, part of my habit stack was every single morning after I would uh, go for my run, I would sit down and I'd write two days of the book. Okay. And it didn't matter if it was crap or if it was good. I, you know, if I had to throw away 75% of it, I'd sit down and write that every single morning, then get on with my other stuff. So the day after I sign off to my editor, I go, I do my morning run. I sit down to work on my book. I'm like, I can't. Right. I'm like, ah, what do I do? Oh, well, right. here's, here's this other book I was working on writing. Let's get back to this one. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. But I do want you to tell me about your book. Tell me about Everyday Excellence, um, especially for those who are listening and are really like into our conversation right now. What is Everyday Excellence? So Everyday Excellence is a multivitamin for life. We all have all these different components that are important to our lives. It's our physical health, our mental health, our spiritual health, our nutrition, our occupation, our relationships. And unfortunately, just because of life, we let certain things fall by the wayside at different points. Yeah. And you, know, yeah. you realize that you put on the COVID-19 or you realize, you know, I haven't spent enough time with my significant other. Or, you know, you suddenly realize, hey, it's been two years since I've taken a class and learned anything. And so what Everyday Excellence is designed to do is it's a daily reader. It's based on quotes and uh, discussion. So every day there's a quote from somebody. It could be Dr. Seuss, oh, Mahatma good. Gandhi, Muhammad Ali, discussion and analysis around it. And the reader's going to bring to it what they're looking for at that point. So it's very personalized. But then there's That's an good. action item to actually crystallize it. Because without actually doing something, without change we're not going to improve right and right when we're talking about doing the grind and building over time that's the reason for the cool nonlinear growth curve on the front of the book because you know when you start doing anything whether it's as a computer coder or playing the violin or as a martial artist you suck period right. case closed right. right right but if you keep at it and keep doing it eventually you don't suck so much Right. And then eventually you get pretty good. And then eventually, as Dave Grohl said, you're nerve long. I love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. I really, and you said it was, I, I heard you uh, kind of slip it in a little bit earlier. It's like 700 pages. Is that right? Yeah, something like that. Because there's <laughs> between one and three pages every single day of the year. I love that. So all 366, because I took an account leap year. And you know, the, the action items are designed to be relatively easy, too. I mean, some of them are a little bit longer, like doing a SWOT analysis at the start of the year, strength, mm. weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Or uh, a hard one is on a page where we're talking about forgiveness, is sitting down 
and writing a letter to somebody that you're really angry with and explaining why and then burning the letter. Yeah, it's good. That's okay? good. But some of them are really easy, like smile at five people today. And that's actually one of my favorite ones because there's so much psychology and neurobiology mm -hmm. hidden within that. You know, if mm -hmm. I if I smile at you, what happens is my cortisol levels drop. My cortisol, uh, cortisol is the stress hormone. So right. what it does is it, cortisol accelerates the aging process. So by mm. smiling, I'm decreasing the cortisol. I'm slowing down the aging process. And it actually helps burn body fat, by the way, when you reduce your cortisol level. So for all the entrepreneurs who are sitting around eating donuts while they program, uh, you know, start smiling a little bit more. But <laughs> it also um, can turn around and increase your serotonin levels and all that. And if I smile at you because of the mirror neurons, you're smiling back at me. Right, right. Okay? So I have just given you the gift of health. Right. Oh, You're that's good. healthier and better off. That's for it. Good. What it cost me a couple of seconds of my life maximum. Right. And also yeah. reduced your cortisol levels. So exactly. there you go. So right. It's a win win. Yeah. Yeah. And so maybe it's this a win -win. is because I grew up in a small town, you know, where we didn't even have a traffic light until after I was out of grad school. But <laughs> I said hello to people. I smile at people. Have a nice day. Right. Things like that. Because what does it take from us to do that? But right. what can it do to somebody else in terms of improving their day, making them feel better? I mean, I've literally heard stories of people who are getting ready to um, commit suicide and somebody said, have a nice day mm -hmm. or smiled at them or whatever, and it changed them. And they didn't do that and went on to accomplish other things. Yeah. So yeah. it's that little thing, uh, as my mom always said, if you're having a bad day, go help somebody else. Smiling at somebody, saying, being polite, these little things, holding a door are those little things that can truly add up. And as Zeno of Citium, the founder of Stoicism said, well-being is no small thing, but it's made up mm -hmm. of small steps. And mm -hmm. again, going back to our nonlinear growth curve, small steps yielding huge results over time. Right, right. That's so good. And I love that you um, really are encompassing everything because the way you started with, oh, you may, maybe you start with a SWOT analysis, analysis which is, a, you know, more business-like, but then we're also going to talk about forgiveness, that spiritual and emotional piece as well. That's really helpful, right? Because I, I think that we we tend to separate ourselves from different things. So we'll we separate the, things in compartments. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. we have our psychology over here and we have our you know, physical training over here. You know what? Working out is one of the best things that you can do for your mental health. Right, so right. So you go for a half hour run, you're in a better mood, even if you're wheezing and ready to puke because you're not a good runner yet. But <laughs> it makes you better. And it's these little things. And you do hard things like that, you're able to do more hard things like build a business or be a special needs parent or have a relationship with somebody else because relationships are never easy, whether they're in business or on the personal side of things. Right. So it's, you do something here, but it gives you exportable concepts and skills in other areas. And right. so that's the whole idea of excellence is that is cross-functional in a lot of ways. Because once you start applying, uh, I believe it's the Hawking phenomenon, where if you start measuring something, it'll start improving. If you start mm -hmm, improving mm -hmm. in one area, the natural tendency is to have that carry over into other areas That's and good. you get overall improvement. It's changing the mindset. Really, mm -hmm. it comes down to everybody's concerned about their skill set, whether in sales or programming or all that. And it's all about your will set. If you come mm -hmm. across the problem, are you going to sit down and cry like a little baby? Wah, 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 or are you going to say, all right, this sucks. I'm going to figure out a way to overcome it. I love that. I love that. So, um, I know you have the book and everything and you're helping people a lot in that area as well. Now, is this something that you've taken further and, uh, are helping like with, with coaching people and things like that as well? Yep. Are you doing that? Yeah, you are. Yep. Okay. So, Tell me a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. So most of my coaching in the past has been on the corporate level and specific to different industries that are more sales oriented, but we're in the process of rolling this out where we're expanding the coaching to be much more multifunctional and apply to almost anybody on an individualized basis. So as we were just talking about, you do hard things like training for a marathon, it's going to carry over into the discipline that you have in other right. areas. If you're focused on eating healthier, that's going to help your mental acuity. If you're focused on, hey, I'm going to, instead of taking a smoke break for 15 minutes a day, 
or sitting around and playing on TikTok for 15 minutes. 15 minutes a day is the equivalent of one book a month. Oh, the wow. average American reads less than four books a year. Yeah, yeah. Half of Americans, after they finish their terminal degree, whether it's high school, college, grad school, whichever it is for them, read one or less books a year. Yeah. That's half yeah. of that cohort. Right. So right. if you're reading for 15 minutes a day, and I say consuming as opposed to reading because audiobooks are just as good. You know, you, uh, you can have discussions, you can attend lectures. You know, if you're consuming new information and content, real important stuff for 15 minutes a day, that's the equivalent of a book a month. That's 12 a year. That puts you in the top 15 to 20% of Americans. So, Joe, one question. Do you ever just not freaking want to? <laughs> Do you ever have those days? All the time. Okay. <laughs> Good. Thanks People for saying that. Like, you know, machine. I, there are mornings I don't want to do it. Right. I mean, so, like, like, yesterday I went to the Yankees game. I got home at, or back to the hotel at almost 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And I had had my high school reunion the day before. So I was out until 12.30 at night. Normally I'm in bed by 10 o'clock in the morning because I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to train. Right. So this morning, 4 o'clock, I did not get up. Right. Period, case closed. Okay, it did not happen. And right. you know, am I going to break my streak of, I think it's 123 days in a row where I've hit my step goal of 16,000? I'm, I'm going to hit my goal somehow, but it's also right. raining out now. So I'm not going outside for a run. So I have right. to figure out some way. So motivation Hmm. It comes from the same root as movement and motivation. Once you start moving, then your mind's going to start going and you're going to figure it out. Right. So it's that first step. Peter Thiel's book is called zero to one because that first step is infinite change. It is by far the hardest thing. It is yeah. harder to get up and start you know, working out every single morning than it is to go from a 30 minute workout to a two hour workout. It right. is more difficult to go from saving nothing to saving fifty dollars a month than it is to go from fifty dollars a month to five hundred dollars a month of saving. Is that so first true? Step. Yeah, so structure so you can take that first step. You know, set the alarm clock, put the alarm across the room so you actually have to get out of bed to turn it off. Do yeah. the little things like that to just get going. Take the first step. You know, you don't have to go and run five miles in the morning. Get up and just go outside for five minutes. Right. But what's right. going to happen is as you start doing it, you change your identity. And so my ad identity at this point is I do these things every day. So, right. Right. and if you have that streak, uh, Jerry Seinfeld actually did something like this. He had a deal where he had a calendar and he had to write at least one joke every single day and he'd put an X on the calendar. And after having like 30 X's in a row, he didn't want to do it one day, but he wasn't going to break the streak. Right. This is one of the things that Alcoholics Anonymous does when you get the coin, you know, your one day coin, your seven day coin, your one month coin, your two month coin, your one year coin. People don't want to break the street. So find a way to do that. That's good. That That's good. The feedback loop. And it's as um, a good teammate would say, I don't want to let down my team. You know, you give your kids a reputation to uphold and they probably will. You know, people come to the Yankees and, you know, you uphold the Yankee tradition same thing have a, a standard to uphold so like i've got certain things that i do for work and i have a saying no goose eggs right even if everything else goes to hell in a handbasket everything's wrong i have to get one introduction per day to a potential client no matter That's what good. some days are That's awesome good. i get like eight and all that but you know what it is now what essentially three o'clock here on the east coast mm -hmm. i still need to get my one for the day now yeah. I will because that's what I do. Right. I love but, that. You know, I really don't want to do it today. Right. Not, I don't want to. But guess what? I'm going to suck it up and do it. Right. I and love that, Joe. Up. And you don't have to have these incredibly high standards yeah. every single day. Some days you can't do it. But if you meet that minimum required threshold. I love it. Then on other days, which are good days, you blow right through the goal. You blow right through the ceiling. But right. if you're doing this minimum thing every single day, no matter what. Guess what? That's your nonlinear growth curve there. That's right. And don't wait for motivation, right? Just start the steps. Yeah, do motivation it will come. Motivated in the process. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I you love that joke. You're motivated enough to do this. You think I'm motivated to go out and run a marathon? No. Right. The first guy who ran a marathon died. Right. <laughs>
Oh my God. So Joe, before we let you go, this is a really fantastic conversation. I want to make sure that people know how to get in contact with you and, and buy your book and follow you and all that. So give us, um, you know, where people can support you. Okay. So they can buy the book on Amazon. They can go to barnesandnobles.com and get, you know, all those sorts of things. But I actually recommend that they go and look at the website, everyday-excellence.com. Because okay. yeah, they can buy the book there. And that's great that, you know, buys my running shoes and beer, but there, it's also an environment designed for people's success. Every single day, there's a new micro blog that goes up there. All the podcasts live up there. There is a um, the link to the YouTube channel, link to the TikToks going up in a couple of days. So there's a whole bunch of free resources that people can use to tap into so that they can continuously just grow and get along on their journey of excellence. So That's everyday awesome. dash excellence.com. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. I know you still got to make that that introduction, those calls. So I really thank you for uh, taking the time to be with me because this was a really enriching conversation and I know I'm going to take a lot away from it. And so with everybody listening. So thank you, Joe. I appreciate you. Nina, thank you. Be excellent and grow today. Uh, I, I plan to, especially now, everything you were saying was kind of convicting me about putting the alarm on the other side of the room, getting up a little bit earlier. I'm like, all right, Joe, I get it. I'll do it. <laughs> So thank you so, so much. And guys, thank you so much for spending time with us. You have been an amazing audience. I'll make sure to link all of Joe's information below so that you don't miss anything. Go onto his website. Make sure you pick up his book. Call him to work with him. All that fantastic stuff. He still has a, a, an introduction he has to do today. So go ahead and give him a call. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. Thank you guys for being here. Straight talk. No sugar added. Until next time.